Good afternoon. What's up, everybody? Afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We are going to get started here in just a second. I'm going to give some folks time to jump in with us if they are coming. My name is Danny Rivers, and I'm one of the pastors here at LifePoint. And we are in 21 days of prayer. This is day two. And so we're fired up uh, about what God's doing, uh, not only in our church, but all around the country. There are churches all over the country uh, who are involved in 21 days of prayer. Either they're starting right now, or they'll be starting in the next week or so or they'll be doing seven or 14 days, whatever it is that they're doing. But man, we are so part, uh, excited to be part of what God is doing around the country. And we just believe, man, we just believe that this is a time for revival. This is a time for an awakening. This is a time when God is going to move. And we know that prayer moves the heart of God. And so we're, we wanna be all about prayer. And uh, so we're just thankful that all of you have joined us today. Those of you who are joining us on Facebook or YouTube, or wherever we're at all over the place today. Thank you so much um, for joining us uh, every day, um, Monday through Friday at 1245. We will be coming live, uh, various uh, t pastoral members of our team, people on staff, will be coming and giving you a devotion just to kind of encourage you right in the middle of the day. Maybe you're at lunch right now. Maybe you're eating a taco. Uh, I just ate tacos. Pastor Andy and I just ate some tacos, and Pastor John Groves, uh, we ate tacos, and they were delicious and now we're full and sleepy, so it's all good. But we're so glad you've joined us. Um, if you want prayer resources, uh, go to lifepointsa.com backslash 21 days, and we have this prayer journal um, that we've provided for you. It's a PDF, you can download that right there. You can print it, you can use it however you want. Uh, we've typically given away physical copies of this, but because we're not meeting in person right now, we're gonna just give you that online. This is an amazing resource provided by Church of the Highlands. Uh, an incredible personal prayer guide, some, some, some prayer models in there that will help you. For those of you who are ADD like I am and struggle to pray for very long at all, this will be an amazing guide. There's also a place to write down your prayer requests in the back, some model prayers, and you don't want to miss grabbing that. Pick that up uh, at lifepointsa.com backslash 21 days. There's fasting guides there as well, some teachings on prayer, some teachings on fasting. For those of you who want to learn more about that, we would love it. We would absolutely love it if you would, would do that. And then this Saturday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. right here at LifePoint Church, we're going to open the, the building safe, spacious, uh, secure, all of the things that we are sanitized. That's our other word. All the things that we want to do to make sure everybody's safe, we're going to do that. We're going to wear masks. Uh, we're going to pray together from 9 to 10, uh, as we do it every time during 21 days of prayer. Um, and then this Wednesday night is First Wednesday. We're bringing that back. Um, and this First Wednesday will be a worship and prayer gathering. And uh, we're going to do that online. Um, we're going to have a few people from our dream team joining us so that we can have an, some people to speak to, sing to. Um, but otherwise, you can join us online right here on Facebook Live and YouTube as well. We'd love for you to join us. Um, so I'm going to just give you a little devotional, and then we're going to pray together, uh, 10 minutes all together. I had the opportunity yesterday to uh, speak at a great French church, North, North Rock Church here in San Antonio, Pastor Jonathan Moore, Pastor Alicia Moore, and their series was I Choose Joy, or Choose Joy. and as I prepared for the message, um, I realized just how very important and how very necessary um, joy is right now. Uh, so I just want to share a little bit of, uh, of that, uh, that, just a little facet of that, uh, about how to amp up your joy. How many, b believe, how many of you know that we could use a little bit more joy in our world today, right? Uh, how many of you think we could use a little bit more peace um, as well? I think, it's, I think it's true for everybody. So I, I remember getting my very first pair of uh, like high fidelity uh, sort of audiophile uh, headphones. All I had ever had was, you know, the, the little ones that come in your iPhone, and those are really good, actually. Uh, but when I got these monster cans on my ears with noise canceling and all of this technology in them, it was like I had never heard the music before. It was like a whole new experience. I could see all of this nuance inside the music, and it was amazing. And you can do that with your joy. Like if you have just a bitty bit of joy, like a spark right now, bitty bit, I don't, I don't even know what that means. Um, 
you've got a little bit of joy, you can spark that up, you can amp it up. And I think the best way to do that is through gratitude, that gratitude amplifies joy. And the practice of gratitude is so vital for all of us, for all of us to learn, for all of us to be disciplined about, because as people, even with all of our technology, all of our resources, all of our convenience and comforts, dissatisfaction is increasing as a country, our anxiety is increasing, no doubt about that, and our well-being is decreasing. There's a Gallup study that's been going on since 2012 called the World Happiness Report. And so every, every year for the past seven years, it, it, this report says that our country's well-being has sharply declined uh, every single year and our country's dissatisfaction personally has gone up. So you and I need to amp up our joy. So gratitude is so important because it helps us to have the ability to change our mindset to the mindset of Jesus. It could help us even feel better physically, emotionally, and it can also just help us to treat other people better because we're starting to feel better about ourselves. So, so the way that works is that I need to think about, like call to mind, remember, count your blessings. There's an old song that says, I need to count my blessings and the good things in my life. I need to create joy producing thoughts. At the same time, I need to eliminate joy decreasing thoughts. So I need to think this, not that, right? So I stop focusing on all the negative, and there's a lot of negative, y'all. There's a lot of anxious things. There's a lot of fearful things going on. There's problems. There's difficulties in life, and, and there's fearful things to be had, but uh, there's all the things that I wish I had done. There's the things that I feel re regret about that I didn't do. So you stop focusing on all of them, even though that's our natural instinct to do so, and you just start to remember the good things in your life. You list them. You count your blessing. David says in Psalm 126, verse 3, the Lord has done great things. And if we just stopped right there, somebody should give an amen right there in the, in, the, in, the, in the comments. The Lord has done great things. And then here's the second half. And we, as a result, are filled with joy. So when David calls to mind the great things that God has done for him, even though sometimes you'll read the Psalms, he'll be like, it's bad, 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 bad. But he'll always finish, almost always finish with, but the Lord is, is, is amazing. So David starts to recall, he starts to recount the blessings of God in his life. And, and, and even though it's wired up in us to sort of think about all the negative things, they, they'll tend to get our attention more than the positive things. But when we're disciplined, because gratitude is a spiritual discipline, y'all, when we do this, man, David says when he starts to remember the blessings of God, he is filled with joy. And joy is getting amped up in David as he remembers what God has actually done for him. So sometimes you have to, when you can't find anything in front of you right now to say, man, God, thank you for that because you did that. Sometimes you got to look, to go forward, sometimes you got to look in the rearview mirror of your life. And you got to recall, oh man, back in 2012, when it looked like there was no hope, when it looked like my marriage, when it looked like my finances, when it looked like my career was being, being derailed, whatever it was. But then God, and you recall that, and, I, and then you start to say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for how you did that. And, and, and it, it, it amps up your blessings because God doesn't change. If, even if you can't see his hand right now, his hand is there and he's coming through. Look, we're all faced with a choice about joy. There are negative things happening all around us. Some people have faced devastating losses through this season and I don't want to minimize that in any way. But for many of us, this season has just been disruptive and disconcerting. So we're faced with a choice. Grumble, right, old school. Grumble or gratitude. Grumble's a strange word, but I'll, I'll, let me give it to you in context in the Bible. Exodus 16, 2. This is just one of many places that the same text appears. In the desert, the people of Israel have left Egypt. They've been enslaved for 400 years plus. In the desert, they're, they're freed miraculously by the hand of God. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. So, 400 years of slavery, God, with a mighty outstretched hand, rescues them, redeems them, takes them out, feeds them, gives them water, takes care of them, but they're grumbling. Now, they're on a journey. You've got to remember this. They're on a journey to the promised land, right? The promised land is this place that's been promised to them for generations, and now they're finally on their way there. But... Their grumbling and their complaining becomes this well-worn path, this well-used pathway in their mind, sort of the neural pathways of their minds. And as a result of their attitude, their spirit, their harshness around this, they, the, an entire generation never arrives in the promised land. In the middle of the disorienting and disconcerting times that they chose to grumble instead of be grateful. And, and, and how quick they were to forget what God had done for them. The Israelites out in the wilderness in disconcerting times, yes, focused 
on the difficulties of their circumstances instead of focusing on the provision of God. They chose to grumble and be grateful and an entire generation never arrived at the promised land. Grumble or gratitude? It's your choice. It's my choice. And here's why it matters. Both of them are pathways. Both of them are trails that lead to destinations, everybody. And it really didn't matter what their intentions were to go to the promised land. Ultimately, it mattered what path they walked on. It matters because determination or direction determines destination. This is from Andy Stanley, the principle of the path. Direction determines destination, not intention. Every single time. So I could say, hey, let's go to the beach, everybody. Let's pack up. Let's go right now. Let's get on our th- I-35 North. We've we're, we got our bathing suits on. We've got our towels. We're ready to go. But if I take I-35 North instead of I-37 South, it doesn't matter what my intentions are. It's about the path. Direction determines destination, right? The practice of gratitude, which is a discipline, a spiritual discipline like prayer, like reading your Bible, is a pathway that leads to a healthier and a joy-filled life. Grumbling, to use our old school Bible word, is a pathway that leads to negative, unhealthy living and joyless living, right? They are both pathways and pathways always lead somewhere. And our lives will always move in the direction of our strongest thoughts because of pathways, And the bottom line of it all is that much of your joy and happiness in life is your choice. It's within your grasp. And that's why we're talking about choosing joy or amplifying our joy. And we amplify our joy by being grateful. So quick practice here. And then we'll pray. Try this for a week. See what happens. Every morning, start your day by writing down, not just calling to mind, but writing down something um, or someone that you're grateful. Three things. I use an app called the 5-Minute Journal. You can find it on, on everywhere the apps are. The 5-Minute Journal to do this is a 5-Minute Journal that starts in the first thing, what are the three things that you're grateful for? First, first thing out of the morning, what are the three things that you're grateful for or the three people you're grateful for? So you write those down. And when you start to focus, and it's a discipline, you're going to have to fight your instincts to go to Facebook or YouTube or whatever else, and I know we're using Facebook right now. When you focus on your blessings, your life starts to look better and better and better. When you focus on what's missing or what's lost, life feels incomplete. Life starts to feel hopeless. It is a matter of choice. So you and I, at the start of 21 days, we're going to amp up our joy. We're going to amp up our faith. We're going to amp up the the revival faith that God is putting inside of our hearts right now. We're going to make a commitment to becoming an openly and overtly grateful person. Openly meaning we're just like, yes, God is good, right? And, and, and overtly mean, meaning we're planning, we're intentional about being grateful, and that will amplify your joy, everybody. Thanks so much, guys, for joining us, all the folks that are joining us right here. I want to just finish just a few, these last two, two minutes or so by praying. We gave everybody a prayer focus for this 21 days. And if you don't have that, lifepointessay.com slash 21 days. You'll find it there. Every day we're posting um, a a prayer focus. And and today we're focusing on on our leaders in government. And so the Bible tells us, Paul writes in 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people for kings and for all of those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and all holiness. So I want us to pray together for our country. Our country has had some desperate times before, but right now our country needs prayer more than ever. So can we as a group of people, right where you are, uh, you may be at lunch, you may have people around you, maybe you just pray in your mind, and that's a good, God hears them. Can we pray for our nation? Lord Jesus, we come to you. God, our nation needs revival. And you said, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, you'll hear from heaven and and you'll pour out blessing and you'll heal our land. And so that's what we're praying for. So we're praying for the leaders. We're praying for our president, President Trump right now, God, that you would help him, that you'd give him wisdom, that you'd bless him. Uh, Vice President Mike Pence, that God, you'd give him wisdom and bless them. All of the leaders of our Congress and our senators and our congressmen and women, God, would you bless them? Would you give them wisdom? God, if it's possible. Romans, Romans says, if it's possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace. God, if it's possible for those leaders to work together to better our country, God, then I believe only you can make that happen. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray for unity, we pray for togetherness, and we pray ultimately that your will be done. God, we pray for Governor Abbott. Uh, the governor of our great state, Lord, that you would give him wisdom, that you'd give him discernment, God, that you'd help him to understand how to navigate not only all the things that are happening in the government, all the things related to COVID, God, would you give him wisdom? We pray 
for our mayor, God, right here in San Antonio, Mayor Ron Nuremberg, that you would give him wisdom and, and discretion and, 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 and the ability to make wise choices for our city. God, we pray for the leaders uh, in, in our police departments and our fire departments, God, and all of our, our various councilmen and women, God, that you'd give them wisdom and grace and blessing. God, we pray for the leaders of our country. We pray for the leaders of our state. We pray for the leaders of our city. We pray all of these things in the powerful, in the holy, in the matchless, come on somebody, in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray these things. And in Jesus' name, everybody said a big old amen. Thank you guys, thank you so very much. Again, if you're just joining us, my name is Danny Rivers and I'm one of the pastors here at LifePoint. Every day at 1245, Monday through Friday, right here. Same place, same time, every day. And then Saturdays at 9 a.m., we're gonna be praying. First Wednesday, this, this Wednesday night at seven, we're gonna be streaming online. Some of our dream team is gonna be with us as well. We'd love to see you. We'd love to see you online. We'd love to see you in person if we can. And God willing, we're gonna get back and have church in this building not very long from now. Uh, we're praying about that. We're asking God for wisdom and we'd ask that you to pray with us as well. God bless you. Have a great, great day. We love you. Thank you so, so much uh, for joining us today. Have a good one, everybody.